right, so um, first of all, I just want to say I don't know what happened, but um, our group just uh, went on to being silent. I don't know why. What happened? <laughs> like Minna was, she worked on the project um, at first. She's the one who made the group WhatsApp group and stuff, but uh, she disappeared. So uh, I don't know what happened. So I had to. Uh, that's why I, I I did this Google Doc. And I shared it with you, doctor. Uh, and I tried as much to, uh, like I did everything with this Google Doc. But I don't know if, if someone else in the group uh, may send you something by email or or a thing. I don't know. So uh, so yeah, um, that's why I'm I'm just the only one. So I I texted him in the group, but no one answered. So. Uh, so I just I I am I'm just doing the presentation by myself, and uh, yeah, so so that's it. So that's sorry. Um, I I was searching for uh the eco sustainable uh, villages in the world, and I found some 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 of them. Um, so I chose one, not not specifically for certain reason but uh the one that i found some sources and and and, and, and this village is uh findhorn eco village it is in findhorn scotland uh, and uh so yeah basically this village started uh, they started this to, to isolate themselves since 1962 but at first it was i believe something as uh, spiritual uh for special reasons then but after that in the 80s they decided to become an eco village and to to defend them themselves for everything in the village including education uh, working uh, all they needs um, what I actually like about Findhorn eco village it is that they're not just uh, they, they they are not uh, like they, they don't depend on all the old techniques and, and they just uh, decide to become uh, Asians they just they, 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 they have education they have schools they they have organizations uh, that work uh, to sustain the village they are they, they are around 450 500 citizen in the village uh, and they mainly depend on agriculture but they also have other activities other community activities and uh, and some some of this stuff to to keep the community uh, engaged and to keep the community uh, sustainable as much as possible they like literally do everything uh, in their village including food, drinks, uh, they don't rely anything from the outside. So, um, and, and to them, to doing it to this scale, around 450 or 500 people, that is much. Uh, I believe that is impressive to, to sustain this amount of people, uh, just by people, not using any outside help by any means. Uh, they have their schools. I don't know if it's a school or college, but something that they learn. Uh, they learn how to sustain their eco village. Like basically, they they don't learn our our basic uh, our standard education. They just learn how to do uh, uh, agriculture, how to farm, how to help the community, how to and all this. So they actually have a website that I included in the Google Doc. A website that. Uh, and it just elaborates all their uh, activities, all their goals, all their aims, um, beliefs. It is actually impressive to uh, to have such a community and to live in one. It's good of experience. It's it's a real real life experience. Real life, real living. They live life the way it should be lived. So uh, when they, when you just you just don't work for money you don't work for 
you work for fame, you work for success, you just work to live, you work to help your community live, you help just for the basic needs of living, you have more space mentally, emotionally and time-wise to, to live for the main reasons you're here for and to think more, to evolve more, to explore more. Yeah, so uh, to this community, Finlor from Eco Villages is not the only one who does that, but they do it in a good way. So, uh, yeah, I don't have much to say. There's nothing more to say, so hope you enjoyed the presentation. Interesting one. Uh, thank you that you keep up. That you kept. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, peace.